Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tom Woods Show, episode 2340. So glad to be joined once again by our friend, Carla Garrick. Carla, uh, you used to be, what was the title? President of the Free State Project? Yep, I'm now still officially President Emeritus, Queen Quill, Sucker, Chairman, all of the above. <laughs> well, an, an ambassador, I would say, a, a yes. very effective ambassador. Thank so you. Uh, I, I want to check in. You know, we like to check in with Carla every few months because I feel like what people are doing with the Free State Project, bringing people to New Hampshire, seeing if they can bring about change in one particular place, rather than thinking, if we don't fix the whole world, then forget it. No, we're going to try one practical thing. I want to see how that's going, because I also feel like what you're doing, the very fact that you're doing something is a rebuke to all the extreme. There are extremely negative people out there who are just downers and nothing's going to work and we're all doomed and there's no point in trying anything. Well, you know, then go curl up in a ball somewhere, because there are some of us who think it's worth fighting for. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the free staters, I would say, we're the example, we're the front lines, we're trying to do the beacon of liberty, we're trying to put the ideas out there, so that hopefully it will spread everywhere. But our belief is we got to start, we got to concentrate, we got to be in one place. And so we've been around now for 20 years. I cannot believe this is going to be our 20th pork fest. I mean, that sort of just really blows my mind. It also explains the gray hair. <laughs> you know, we're sort of growing old now with this movement. But yeah, it's 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 really exciting and it's really great to be in a community, a really active, growing, thriving community of doers, people who, as you say, don't want to curl up and just mope but actually figure stuff out and come build and, and, you know, enjoy life. Why not? We got yeah. one. Yeah, you're darn right. You're darn right. Well, we are going to talk a little bit about the Free State Project and, and Pork Fest and particular things that are going on. But I, I want everybody to understand that this, this gives rise to a lot of bigger questions beyond the Free State Project in New Hampshire about what we're all about and what and, and the different positions people take on some of these big questions. And I think the Free State Project project has really has very very deftly straddled the, the position between people who are uh, who fav who think there might be a political solution or at least we could politically mitigate some of the worst of what's done to us and others who want absolutely nothing to do with politics at all there's been a kind of an uneasy coexistence but a coexistence all the same of those groups in the free state project let's get back to that in, in a in a minute you mentioned quote unquote pork fest there will be some people listening who have no idea what on god's green earth you're talking about and they'll think that it has to do with eating pork Yes, they will. So Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com is where people can find all the information. But that is pork as in porcupine, the one that is prickly, like a lot of our people tend to be. And so obviously the porcupine is the libertarian mascot. And I recently learned, I didn't actually know that it was the Free State Project's mascot and was then adopted by the LP. I always thought it was the other way around, but I just recently heard it, that was not the case. So I thought that was sort of interesting. So, hey, that's kind of cool for the free staters. Uh, so Pork Fest is a month, no, it's a week long camping experience. It's up in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So it's north of the notch at Rogers Campground. And this year will be its 20th year. And I've been to 18 of those 20. So I know a lot about the history. Like it used to be at Rogers and it was moved to Gunstock, then it was moved back to Rogers, why that happened. Stuff like, and I love this, the owner of the campground, when I met him the first time, so this must have been back 2003, four, I think I missed three. So let's say 2004. And we were going into the war. This gentleman was a, you know, he's a retired doctor. He's a smart guy. He was a neocon. Like I remember someone else being. <laughs> a very long time ago, but yes. <laughs> yes, granted. And um, and actually, I um, it was during that time. I mean, a lot of people I knew actually were. And it was interesting watching that journey because I just instinctively have been anti-war since I was like 10 and read Slaughterhouse Five. And I was like, okay, this is, doesn't seem like a good way to solve problems, murder each other. Hmm, maybe we could do better. Let's use our words, right? So anyway, he was a neocon who was like anti-war, 
uh, I mean, pro-war, anti-pot, you know, just and navigating with him just as an example over these 20 years to see how he's changed his views, how he's actually come over. You know, he was a staunch Republican. It wasn't like, you know, I had to teach him economics from the start, but just really watching someone kind of grasp these ideas where he's on a campground with us. And you know, because you came, we held Porkfest in 2020. You were our keynote speaker, Tom. Yeah. I was like, I'm doing it. Will you come to my party? And you were like, damn well, yes, I will. <laughs> In fact, let, let's say a quick word about that. First of all, I'll say something about my involvement. For anybody out there who's thinking, I like the idea of because the idea of it is you have thousands of libertarians there. And there are all kinds of events going on. People are giving workshops, there are lectures or debates. Um, and you don't have to go to any of them if you don't want to. You can sit at your little campsite and chit chat with people as they walk by. Everywhere I went, I was greeted by well-wishers. It, it couldn't have been a more enjoyable time. But you may be thinking, I like all that, but I am not really a camper. And I'll tell you something. When I was growing up, we camped a lot. We went out camping a lot. And I, I remember as a kid, we played softball. It was the adults against the kids. And the kids won every time. And I was so young, I was too dumb to realize the adults were letting us win. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that until I became an adult. And then I realized, wait a minute. I knew they weren't, they couldn't be this bad at it. But my, I'll just tell you something. My, my personal camping days are over. That chapter of the Woods biography is closed. But you can still go to Porkfest because there are, uh, there, there, there is hotel space nearby. Uh, I think Rogers itself has a limited number of rooms, but I that, stay at that. Correct. What is it? Grand Mountain, whatever. It's mm -hmm. very nice, not very far away. So don't let that keep you from from doing it. You can actually shower during the week at a nice <laughs> private facility if that is your preference. You you absolutely can, and uh, there is even one of the so so you mentioned that there are all these different things that happen on the campground. So what we've done over the years is we've developed what is now being called hubs. When we started way back in the day, the idea was how do we show free market ideas and sort of the world we want to create. You know, in 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 a practical you know, physical meat space that people can kind of see, right? And that is one thing. Anyone who's come who had no idea what Porkfest is about leaves with a, wow, like the kids, you know, the kids are selling stuff, entrepreneurship. So these hubs that are now all over the campgrounds initially started as sort of a Agora Alley or Valley and they've grown. So people do everything from, you know, selling maybe meals and, and people are getting fancy. I mean, there was a there was a, a, a crab boil last time. You know, like people are like flying in food. And there's a lady who comes from New York who does jerk chicken, j small plates, maybe like 30 a night that are just delicious. So on these hubs, you have all these different things that are happening and you can go around. But I too am like, yeah, camping, not for me. Um, a lot of the people enjoy it with, you know, if they have smaller kids and they can, you know, sucker them with a the softball. Maybe the parents were like, yeah, we can't really play because my back hurts because sleeping on the ground. Not for me either. But as you said, there's there's camping, there are uh, rooms at Rogers. There's hotels around. I do want to tell folks uh, there are tickets available. The campsite is kind of sold out, so you have to start to get creative. But lots of people are renting out extra spaces on, you know, different campsites. There are a couple of hotels downtown. As you said, the Grand Mountain, that's a lovely hotel. Yep. Uh, my vision, my dream is... You know, I went to Hereticon at the start of last year, and that was the thing Peter Thiel did. It was like very fancy. I was deeply honored to go. It was like 200 people invitation only. I still don't know what I was doing there, but I had a really good time. And uh, I have this vision where I was like, hmm, could they do Hereticon at the fancy hotel while we, you know, the, the sort of grassroots guerrilla fighters, like we're in the trenches, you know, all the smart you know, people get to sit in their ivory towers and write essays about how this is going to work. And then some of us are out there trying to make it work. Now, you've been in this a long time. So have I. 
There is nothing easy about herding cats. There is nothing easy about what we are building here in the Free State Project. I mean, the fact that I'm even still standing is probably testament to something. Yeah. Um, you know, but but it really is. So what happens is Pork Fest becomes this microcosm of the world we want to create. And for people who want to understand it better, there is an NBC series. I think the last time you and I spoke, we talked about this 11 part series that NBC did. You know, they're short, they're 15 minutes long. They cover different parts of the Free State Project, but they did Pork Fest and they're coming back this year. They're doing a follow up. They're doing a panel discussion to talk about their experience of interviewing and working with libertarians, people who are privacy conscious, people who are kind of paranoid, people who are, you know, and it made me realize something. And maybe this is like so obvious to everyone else that it's just going to be one of those, huh, Carla moments. But everyone was so relieved when that came out and it was favorable. Everyone watched it and felt like, you know what? They fairly reflected us. That was mostly because one, they let us speak. There was no voiceover. They only cut people speaking. So it was their words. But also they, uh, everyone was afterwards, they were like, thank God it wasn't a disaster. Thank God it wasn't a hit piece. That, and I had this moment and I was like, why are we waiting for other people to give us good coverage. We have a story here. We should be telling our story now. You know, like I'm really excited to, to like really get my hands into some content here in the Free State Project and then start to delve into these libertarian issues of which one I would love to discuss because I want to know what you think, Tom, is so we have RFK is coming to Pork. Robert Kennedy, I'm kind of excited just because I'm like, ah, Kennedy is coming to my party, yo. <laughs> but one of their demands uh, or requests was that for his speech, which will be in the pavilion, which just a sketch for folks. So there's this massive campground, then there's a sort of like main field area. And we put a couple of tents up there and then there's the large pavilion where about 500 people can sit and listen with the doors open. So they wanna bring in metal detectors and basically Porkfest is an open carry gun. You know, people are like 3D printing guns kind of party, right? <laughs> and so they're bringing metal detectors and they want everyone who goes to his talk to uh, be disarmed. So needless to say, this has caused a bit of a kerfuffle <laughs> as we like to call it. Um, so it's been really interesting. So the immediate response was, how dare they come, our rules, our principles, do what we say, you know. And the organizer, Dennis Pratt, who is doing, you know, like really, it's not an easy job. I've organized four. It's a nightmare. Yeah. It's stuck. Yeah. So He's a hero. He, he, he's a hero. And he called me. I was down in my garden. I have a little garden uh, down the hill. And uh, I was so I was a little distracted, to be honest. And he was kind of like, this is what they're saying. What do you think? And I was like, why not? Let's do it. Let's see what happens. OK, so people were very upset. They're going to do a counter protest. Um, you know, all this, oh, at one stage I heard all the former veterans were going to like line up with their guns and like just all this weird energy. And I was sort of like, can't we just treat it like we invited a guest and this is what they're asking and it's polite yeah. to can I can I jump in here? Are? Can I jump in yeah. on this? This is not a violation of your principle because your principle is we come to an agreement that, that's voluntarily reached and we all abide by it. That's our general principle. Guns are only secondary to that. The, the general principle is that we agree that we're going to be bound only by terms that are acceptable to everybody. And if we if, so I would go see him under those conditions, if that's so would I. If, 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 if I felt like the condition was was onerous, um, then I just wouldn't go see him. And then that would be again, that that's the world that we are actually trying to build. It's not pure, strictly speaking, uh, a guns everywhere world or a free speech everywhere world. That's not what we're building. We're building a uh, private parties can decide what terms they want to 
um, interact with each other on. That's the fundamental principle. Not to mention, not to mention, I think we can cut a little slack and be a little gracious to a guy whose father was assassinated and whose uncle was assassinated and who almost certainly has angered not almost certainly, has certainly angered the very kinds of people who might have been behind those two other things, <laughs> you know? Mm. So maybe he has a particular reason. Now, I know that the best way to, to deal with gun violence is, you know, to have more guns. But, you know, it only takes one New World Order gunshot to the head to put an end to that. You know, so yeah, I, and let's not draw that kind of energy. I'm I'm very optimistic it's going to be like a no, of course, no, the absolutely. Time and then I'm just saying just, that I can understand where he's coming from on that. No, of course, me too. And and so it was interesting, right? So I sort of grappled with the well, you know, would I am I going to go see him? And I was like, yes, of course, because you know what? If I went to see him at UNH or down in Boston or anywhere same else. Thing. I wouldn't have had a gun anyway. Right. There are a couple of like playful ideas. So so what I'm hopeful for, and maybe this is like a message to, you know, our, our people who are listening, you know, we have over 3000 people who come. It can be complicated when you're dealing with large groups of people to keep the lid on stuff. And historically speaking, I mean, Porkfest has always been a peaceful event, but we have had like stuff happen over the years. And so, and and I've been in some violent, dangerous protests over the years. I've been, you know, arrested. I've been at uh, places where it kind of went from your protesting to some guy jumping on a police car and, you know, rapping, you know, F the police, you know, things can turn really quickly. So I definitely want folks who are listening to this who feel like they have a beef to just remember, first of all, from that ambassador perspective, from the diplomacy perspective, we don't have to agree with everyone. I don't agree with all my friends on everything. I don't know when this purism yeah. note became such a thing. Like it feels Stalin-esque to me. I mean, I've been like unfriended by people for being in a photo with the wrong Republic, you know? And I'm just like, oh, okay, come on. Yeah. Are we like that? No, we're exploring ideas and it's a massive opportunity. Not only do we have RFK coming and the, the tongue in cheek thing there was, well, what'll happen? I, I, you know, one, I was like, well, maybe I'll roll in with my own armed security and just be like, hi, RFK, you have your armed security. I have my armed security. Mm, that's right, that's fair, right? Or have them disarm everyone and then be like, so now you disarm your security as well. Like if you're disarming everyone, what makes you special, right? Either we all lose our guns. So it'll be interesting. I think there's going to be a conversation. I hope that once we're on site, people see this as an opportunity to have cogent, healthy discussions about things we disagree about. There's a way to have a conversation about this and gun rights and property rights and you know disagreeing on principle on things that could be quite healthy but also there's this massive opportunity rfk vivek ramashwamy tulsi gabbard uh i think kucinich dennis kucinich is coming i'm excited larry elders is coming from california you know and he's actually lp so i'm really excited about him but to have these people there, a lot of people were like the backlash was, Wait, why are you, you confusing... have all these politicians? Hang on just a second. I'm pretty sure Larry Elder is, is GOP. Are you confusing it with Larry Sharp? No, no. I know Larry from New York, too. But no, Elders, if you Google him, he will say I'm a small L libertarian. OK, well, that's something. OK, but I don't think he's LP. Yeah, I don't think he's LP party. You're yeah. right. Sorry. Okay. I, I tend to just think of small L. Just, I just clarifying. Take what I can get. <laughs> Okay. No, but correct. You're you're correct. Yeah, he has. Uh, well, you know, as long you know, as you're maybe... mentioning politicians being there, and and that's not uh, unheard of in the history of Porkfest, but it's not the it's not the primary draw. People generally don't go there to hear political candidates. It's interesting that several people from politics and some high profile people think Porkfest is worth their time. So that goes to show that it's, uh, you know, what how it's grown in in numbers and influence. 